Okay, so the first architectural topic that we're gonna talk about in this course is server-side rendering. Now, many of you may know what server-side rendering is already. I'll define it in just a second for those of you who don't. But server-side rendering is an extremely important topic for many production-grade applications. And it can also considerably complicate the architecture of our application, which is why we're gonna take a look at it here. So first of all, let's talk about what server-side rendering is. In the normal flow of a React application, here's what happens. The client's browser makes a request to the server and loads the index.html file, which doesn't really contain anything. It's basically blank at that point. That index.html file then tells the browser to load our React scripts, which are the ones that actually render all of the HTML elements into the page. However, with server-side rendering, the server is the one that takes care of running our React scripts and rendering all of our elements. We'll see what this looks like in code very shortly, but first let's talk about some of the comparisons between client-side rendering and server-side rendering. So, as we said, client-side rendering renders the app to HTML in the user's browser. So the user's browser is essentially the one that's doing all the work there. In server-side rendering, however, the server is the one that's doing most of the work, and then it simply sends that finished HTML document to the client. Right? The client doesn't really have to do very much in that case. As far as the order in which things happen between client-side rendering and server-side rendering, with client-side rendering, the process is pretty complicated. First, as I've said, we have to load the index.html file from the server. Then that index.html file tells the browser to load the JS bundle from the server that contains all of our React code. The browser will then run that bundle, right? Rendering all of our elements. It will display our app, and then it will still have to load the data from the server. So you can see we've got quite a few round trips here. We've got at least three for loading index.html, loading the JS bundle, and loading the data. With server-side rendering, this process is quite a bit simpler, actually. We start off with the server rendering the app, basically running our React scripts, converting it to HTML. It then loads the data, which is much easier since we're on the server. And after that, it will create an HTML document, which it will send directly to the client side. So as far as the pros and cons of each of these, with client-side rendering, there's generally less strain on the server, right? The user's browser is the one that's doing all of the work of rendering. However, especially in cases where users have a slow internet connection or where your users are geographically very far away from you, for example, if your servers are in New York and your users are in Australia, having these multiple round trips just to load the index.html, the JS bundle, and the data can really lead to a very poor user experience. However, with server-side rendering, since there's only one round trip, this can lead to a drastically improved user experience, and it can also be better for SEO. However, obviously there's gonna be more strain on the server since the server is the one doing all the work. So if you have a lot of users during a big sale or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your server's powerful enough to handle that. Okay, so now that we've learned a lot of the background behind server-side rendering and how it works, what we're gonna do is see what it looks like in the context of a full-stack React application. So to get started here, you're gonna to want to copy the starting state of the exercise files, which contain basically just a stripped down version of the Create React app starting app. So once you've got that, you're gonna to wanna to run npm install in that folder, and that will install all of the dependencies for the project. And once you've done that, what we're gonna do next is set up a very simple blog application, which will give us a good starting point for adding server-side rendering. So to get started, let's create a new folder in here, which we will call pages. And we're gonna create three different pages for our app. None of them is gonna be very complex. We're just gonna say home.js, which will be the home page. We'll have about.js, which will be the about page. And we'll have articles.js, which will be the articles page. And now that we've done that, let's just implement some very, very simple JSX for each of these. What we're gonna do is say export const home. And the JSX for this, we're just gonna have an H1 heading that says home. 
And for purposes that I'll explain once we actually start rendering this thing on the server, we are gonna need to say import React from React at the top. This is something that Create React App has made it possible for us not to do when we're running it locally, but when we're rendering it on the server, just because of how React works behind the scenes, we're gonna need to have this import at the top of any file where we use JSX. So that's our home component. Let's just copy this and paste it into about and articles. And these are gonna be pretty much the same thing. We just need to change the component name and the components heading here. And we'll do the same for our articles page. We'll say articles and articles. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is just add basic routes for each of these. So here's what that's gonna look like. We're gonna start off by installing the React Router DOM package. Many of you are already familiar with React Router DOM. We're just gonna install that. And while that's installing, let's head over to our app component and add routes for each of these. So first of all, we're gonna also have to import React at the top of our app.js file. We're gonna say import React from React. That'll allow us to render this thing on the server once we have one. And let's create some routes here. We're gonna start off by importing some components from the React Router DOM package. So we'll say import browser router, switch and route, as well as link from React Router DOM. And then we're gonna set that all up by wrapping everything inside a browser router, including the heading here. We're gonna have a switch and inside that switch, we're gonna define all of our routes. So first we're gonna to have to import our home about and articles components. I'm just gonna do that like this. About import articles. And these are all from the pages directory. And now that we have those, let's define our routes. We're gonna have the first route be for our home component. The path for this route is gonna be just slash, and we're gonna say that it's exact since we, since we only want this to show up when it really is the home route. Under that, we're gonna have route with a path of slash about. That'll be for our about page, of course. And then we'll have another route with the path of articles, which, as you may have guessed, is gonna display our articles page. So now that we have all of our pages, the last thing we're gonna do is just add a basic nav bar at the top here for each of our pages so that we can get around a little easier. So we're just gonna have an unordered list here with several list items, each of which will contain a link to the respective pages. So we'll have a link to our home page here, which will say home. We're gonna have a link to our about page here, which will say about. And we're gonna have a link to our articles page, which will say articles. Okay, so let's run our application locally just to make sure everything works. And this is not being server-side rendered right now. That's what we'll add in just a minute here. And let's just make sure our routes work. And that's it, we should be good to go to add server-side rendering to our application. Okay, so now that we have our very simple blog application, what we're gonna do is start adding some server-side rendering to it. So the first step in all of this is that we have to create a server file that will actually run, listen for requests, and render and serve our app. So let's create a new file in the outermost directory of our project here, and we're gonna call it server.js. Now, this is gonna be a basic express server, and we'll wanna write it in the same JavaScript syntax that we write our front end in, right? Since it's going to be essentially running our front end code. So in order to do both of those things, we need to install a few packages. The first thing we're gonna do is say npm install dash dash save dash dev. And we're gonna install some packages from Babel that will basically take the modern code that we write, such as in React as well as on the server itself, and basically convert that into something that Node.js will be able to run. So we're gonna say npm install save dev, 
We're going to install a few packages here. The first one's going to be at babel slash core, then at babel slash node, at babel slash preset dash env, and at babel slash preset dash react. And we're also going to install a node daemon to take care of running and restarting our server when we make changes. So let's hit enter and install all of those packages. And once you've installed those, we're also going to want to install the express package, which we can use to build a basic server. And there we go. So let's get started creating our server. We're going to start off, of course, by importing express, which we'll be using to create our server endpoints. And we're also going to import React since we'll be using JSX inside our server. After that, we're also going to import something called render to string from React DOM slash server. This will do the actual rendering of our app, as you'll see. And that's all we'll need for now. So let's create our server. We're going to say const app equals express. And then we're going to say app dot get. And the path that we're going to specify is going to be slash with an asterisk. Basically, that means that this route will respond to any get requests on any path, which is exactly what we want, since basically what we want to do is no matter what path the user requests, we want to send them back this HTML file, which is going to be our rendered React app. So the callback here is just going to be a standard express callback. And inside of here, what we're going to do is say const react app equals render to string. And this render to string is a function that we can pass JSX to, and it will basically take that and render it into actual HTML. Okay, so just to get started here, let's define a basic H1 heading. And we'll say something like hello from the server side. All right. So what this line is going to do is take this JSX, convert it into an actual HTML string, and we're going to send that HTML string back to the client. Now, the way we do that is by saying return response.send. And we're just going to define a very basic HTML string in here. We're going to say HTML, HTML. We're going to define our body here. And inside there, we're going to say div id equals root, just like the usual div that we render our React app into. And inside of there, we're going to insert the React app string. So we're going to say React app. Just like that. Okay, so that's our server endpoint that will take care of rendering the JSX and sending it back to the client. What we're going to do now is just tell our server to listen on port 8080. And we'll say console.log server is listening on port 8080. And that's all for our server code for now. One last thing that we're going to have to do before we'll actually be able to run this code is define a Babel RC file. This will basically tell Babel, which again, we're going to be using to run our server and transpile code. It's going to tell it what presets it will need to use in order to make sense of our code. So let's create a file in here called babelrc. This is just going to be a simple JSON object that we put in here with the key presets and a value, which is going to be an array that contains two things. The first is going to be babel slash preset dash env. That's just the standard preset for converting newer JavaScript syntax into older JavaScript syntax. And then we're going to add another preset called at babel slash preset dash react. Basically, this preset will take care of transpiling the JSX into actual JavaScript code. JSX isn't typically something that Node.js can parse without a little help. So now that we have our Babel RC, what we're going to do is run our application. And to do that, we're just going to open up a terminal and say npx babel dash node server.js, and we should see that it says server is listening on port 8080. So now if we go up here and paste 
localhost 8080, we should see the message hello from the server side. And this was rendered from JSX on the server and sent back to the client side. We can actually see this if we open up our inspector window, go to the network tab. We might have to hit refresh so that we can see the actual requests. And if you click on this localhost request, what you're gonna see is the HTML that our server actually sent back. You can see that it's sent back H1, and it says hello from the server side inside of there. All right, so we've seen a very basic example of server side rendering. However, at this point, our server is still just rendering a basic HTML element in JSX instead of our actual React app. Obviously, now that we've created this app and our page components, we're gonna want to have our server render those. So in order to get that working, there are a few steps that we have to take. The first thing we have to do is build our React app. And we can do that by running the command npm run build. And what that will do is generate a build directory that will contain all of our minified transpiled React code. And now that we've done that, let's open up our server.js file again. And we're gonna add a few things. The first thing we're gonna add is a line that tells our server to statically serve the files inside that build folder. So to do that, what we're gonna do is say app.use and then express.static. And the argument here is going to be dot slash build. So we're telling it to serve static files from that directory. And we're gonna add an argument here, which is an object that contains the property index and the value false. Basically, if you take a look inside this build folder, you'll see that it contains an index.html file. Now, just by default, when Express is serving a static folder like we are here, when it sees that the folder has an index.html file and the user is trying to load data from it, it will immediately send back that file. So we don't want that to happen for reasons that I'll show you in just a minute. So that's why we specify this index false thing. So now that we have that set up, we should be able to render basic components from our React application. Let's start off by rendering our home page. What this is gonna look like is we're gonna import it. We'll say import home from pages slash home. And then we're gonna remove this H1 heading and put in our home component. All right. So now just to make sure our app is running again, let's say npx babel dash node server.js, and if you want this to automatically update for you, you can say npx node daemon dash dash exec npx babel node server.js, kind of a long command, but that basically just takes care of restarting our server for us as we make changes. Oops, and it looks like I need to add source slash pages slash home there. And we should see that our server is successfully listening. So let's go back here and refresh our localhost 8080. And we should see that the home component is now displayed in our browser. So at this point, we're able to render basic components from our React app on our server. So the next thing that we're gonna do is render our app component. You may have wondered why we didn't do that at first, and that's because in order for it to work, we have to set up routing on our server for the front end. Now this is gonna look a little strange. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to have to import something called static router from React Router DOM. Static router is basically the server side equivalent of browser router that we saw on the front end. So here's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna say inside our render to string, we'll say static router, and we're gonna to need to also pass a prop called location, which is gonna be equal to request.url. That just lets this static router know what route the user is actually requesting, so it can render it accordingly. And then inside of here, we're gonna display our app component, which we'll need to import up at the top here. We're gonna say import app from, from dot slash source slash app. And then what we're gonna to need to do is go over to our app component and move this browser router out into the index.js file. So we're gonna remove those from here. We're gonna to have to replace them with React Fragments. 
like this. And then up here, we'll remove that import. And then let's go into index.js. And here's where we're going to add the browser router component. So we're going to say import browser router from React Router DOM. And we're going to wrap our app component here in a browser router. So you might be wondering why we have to add this browser router thing to index.js. After all, if our server is just taking care of rendering React for us, why do we need this index.js file at all, right? Isn't it just kind of redundant since we're just getting a pre-rendered HTML document? Well, the responsibilities of this index.js file are going to shift a little bit. So first of all, what we're going to do is change this from react-dom.render to react dom dot hydrate. Now what react dom dot hydrate does is it takes the pre-rendered HTML that we're going to get from our server and adds react to it so that it will update appropriately when data in our application changes, right? So basically, even though we're getting an HTML document from the server, we still want it to behave and re-render like a react app, right? That's what this hydrate function makes sure of. So now that we have that, the last thing we need to do is inside our server.js file, instead of just sending back this basic HTML string that we coded out, we're going to actually load the index.html file from our build folder and manually replace this div ID root with our React app. Again, the reason that we have to do this is that if you look at index.html, it's kind of hard to see, but basically when we build our React app, it adds these script tags to the end with a random hash that will basically point to the compiled React scripts. Now, since we can't know what these are going to be on our server, we won't know what names they have. We simply have to load this index.html file and manually replace this div with our app. So don't worry if that didn't quite make sense. You're going to see what that looks like here. The first thing we're going to do is load that index.html file, which we'll say const, and we'll call it template file, equals path.resolve dot slash build slash index.html. So we're loading that file, and up at the top, we're going to have to import path and fs. So we'll say import path from path, import fs from fs. All right, and now that we've resolved the path, we can load the data. So we'll just say fs.read file template file. We're going to say utf8 is the encoding. And our callback here is going to have error and data. Data, of course, here is going to be the actual contents of the index.html file. So what we need to do is basically we'll want to check if there's an error. Hopefully there won't be, but it's just good practice to do something in this case. In that case, we'll just say return response.status 500, and we'll send the error back to the client. We'll just say dot send and send the error back to them. Otherwise, what we're going to do is send them back the contents of this template file with the div that we would normally render our React app into replaced with our already rendered React app. So here's what that's going to look like. We're going to say return response.send, and we're going to say data.replace, and we're going to replace the div with the ID of root. Right? It just looks like that if you take a look in the index.html file. We're going to replace that, and we're going to use backticks here because it's a template string. We're going to say div id equals root, insert our React app into there, right? That's our rendered HTML. And that's what that's going to look like. So let's give this a try now. First of all, we need to rebuild our front end since we made changes to it. And then we're just going to run our server again by saying npx node daemon exec. That big long command that I showed you earlier should be in your command history. And let's head over and see if this is working. So let's refresh our app. And we should see 
that our homepage comes up, our about page, our articles page, everything. And if we inspect this, what we're going to see, if we go to network and take a look at the initial file that we got, we should be able to search for server side rendering example. And we'll see that that HTML is indeed server side rendered in the first response that we get. In other words, the server took care of rendering all of that for us. All right, so now that we have our app set up for basic server-side rendering, our server is basically taking care of rendering all of our React components, the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is how to add styling. Now, this is actually not as trivial as it sounds since the normal way of adding style to React components in a Create React app application is using CSS modules. Now, in order for CSS modules to work on the server side when we're rendering it, that would involve us setting up Webpack ourselves. And since I really would like to avoid that here, since it can be a little too in-depth and complicated for most people, I'm gonna show you instead two of my favorite ways for adding styles to server-side rendering. So the first thing, which is the rather obvious way of going about it, would be to open up the index.css file and simply add all the styles for your application inside of there. Right? Basically what happens is that when you build this, here, let's first add just a basic style to it. We'll say H1, we'll say color green, and save it. If we build our front end application now, if we say npm run build, what we're gonna see is that this style that we added is gonna be incorporated into the CSS that our app actually uses. So if we open up static CSS, we should be able to find this inside of here somewhere. All right, so there's our color green inside of this minified CSS. So that's one way to do it. And this would work, by the way, if we were to run our application again, just to show you. If we refresh it now, we'll see that our H1s are indeed green. However, there's another what I would consider better way of doing this, and that's using something called styled components. So basically styled components are just an alternate syntax for adding styles to our components in React. Here's how they work. We're gonna start off by installing the styled components package by saying npm install styled components. And then what we're gonna do is, first of all, we'll remove this color green from our styles here. And then inside our app.js file or wherever we want to add styling to a given element, what we're gonna do is import styled from styled components. And I'm not gonna go too much into detail on how styled components work here, but here's the basic syntax. We're gonna say const and we'll say big green heading and then we'll say styled.h1, which will give us the h1 element as a base for the extra styles we're gonna add here. And then inside this string, what we're gonna do is simply add the styles that we want to apply to this element when we use it in JSX. So what we're gonna do is say color green, and we'll say font size, we'll do something like 96 pixels, just to make it that much more apparent. Now, the way we use this big green heading is simply by replacing the tags of an element with it. And what that will do is automatically apply the styles we specified here and the element we specified here to this element. So in other words, this h1 tag will be a big green h1 tag. We're gonna say big green heading. And that's basically it. The problem though, is that this won't yet work on the server side. I'll show you why in just a minute, but first of all, I'll show you that it works on the client side. If we just run our app as a regular client side app, we'll see that server side rendering example is indeed big and green. However, if we build our front end again by running npm run build, what we're gonna see is that if we run our server and view that page from there, our server-side rendering example is not actually a big green heading. So what's the problem here? Well, the problem has to do with how styled components and styles in general work. Basically, when we're running it on the client side, 
Style components work by adding a special class name to each of our components and then generating the corresponding CSS for it. However, when we're rendering our app server side, what we have to actually do is scrape all of the generated styles out of our app and insert them into the index.html file that we send to the client. Again, that might sound a little complicated, but it's actually fairly straightforward. Here's what that's gonna look like. The first thing we're gonna do is start off by importing something called server style sheet from styled components. And then down here, what we're gonna do is have our server style sheet thing that we just imported scrape all of these styles out of our app as it renders and basically give that to us inside a style tag that we can insert into our HTML. So here's what this is gonna look like. We're gonna say const sheet equals new server style sheet. And then inside our render to string, we're gonna say sheet dot collect styles, just like that. And at this point, this sheet will have scraped all of the styles from our rendered application. So what we have to do now is replace something in our index.html, just like we did with our root. The only problem though, is that at this point, there is no reliable element that we can replace with our styles. So what we're gonna do is inside our index.html file in our public directory, up here in the header, we're gonna add two curly braces, and say styles. Now, the purpose of this is that we'll basically just be replacing this string in our HTML file with our generated styles. So here's what that's gonna look like. We're gonna add onto the end of our data.replace, we're gonna add another dot replace, and we're gonna say replace double curly braces with styles in the middle with the scraped styles that our sheet object here has. So what that looks like is we just have to say sheet dot get style tags. And that's really all we have to do. So let's rebuild our front end. Now that we made those changes to the index.html file, we're gonna say npm run build. And then we're gonna run our server again. And let's go take a look and see if that solved our problem. So let's refresh our app. And we'll see that indeed our server side rendering example is big and green. And we can see if we inspect the file that we got back, if we open up network, we might need to refresh the page here and take a look at articles. We see that it added this style tag with this randomly generated style name that styled components came up with for us to our HTML, right? So that's basically being applied automatically to all of the pre-rendered HTML inside our application. All right, so at this point we have a pretty fully functional server-side app. Now obviously our app is not that complex. It's only got three different pages and none of those pages displays much data besides a title. But the basic concepts that we've covered here apply in server-side rendered apps of all different sizes. Now, later on in the course, we're gonna take a look at how data loading is incorporated with server-side rendering, which is obviously a very important topic as well. But before we move on from the basics, I wanna point out a few caveats that have to do with server-side rendering. Probably the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're working on the front end of a server-side rendered application is that a lot of the time, the code that you write is not going to actually be executing in the browser. So here's what that means. Let's say that inside your app component, you wanted to access the window global. Let's say that you just wanted to do something like log out the location. So we'll say window.location.href. And let's build our front end and serve it. And what we're gonna see is that if we try and load our application again, we'll get an error saying that window is not defined. Now, the reason we get this error is because even though we're used to thinking about our React apps executing in the browser, because we're rendering them on the server, when this code executes, there actually is no window. Now, this is something we'll take a look at in a lot more detail again later on when we look at data loading. 
but it's very important to be aware of. And another thing to keep in mind too, is that if you use a document, that's gonna suffer from the same thing, right? You're gonna get an error generally saying that document is not defined. So that's probably the main caveat to keep in mind when you're working with server-side rendered apps in React is that when they're being rendered, the code that they're executing is not in the browser.